Hello Ratbags, it's Jade, welcome to a Valheim video. Today we are going to cover the untold secrets of the Half and Home update. Someone has compiled a list of all the undocumented changes. Wevospu put this up a few days ago and I thought it was pretty interesting. Now some of this stuff we've seen in the patch notes and I know about it already from seeing developers talk in streams and even asking them sometimes. And of course from heavily playing it in the last few days. But definitely there's a few things here that I thought were pretty interesting. So we're going to go over some of these, the more interesting stuff. So do leave a like, make sure you subscribe, so go and check out the rest of my content. Especially my draw attention to my 100 days of Valheim before the Half and Home update. I'm about to start my 200 days and you can watch me live across YouTube and Twitch. So go and follow my links in the comment section down below too. Alright, let's go. Now there's a lot to go through here, so I'm just going to rattle it off and then we'll talk about some of the most interesting stuff. At the very beginning, attacks now have a pickaxe special flag, seems to be at some sort of multi colliding with mine rocks. Basically, you guys have found it's a lot easier now to mine. When you're digging for metal in the swamp caves, you should be gathering a lot more or you should be getting through some of the piles a lot quicker. Attacks can only work against tame creatures, so obviously the butchering knife, you don't know that's what that does, it means that you can kill any of your tames. It doesn't work on other enemies though, like you can't just use it as a weapon I tried killing a bunch of creatures recently and yeah, it's only your tames that it works on. Attacks only give experience against real targets, so no more levelling up hitting a rock. I can't believe people used to give me grief when I said it was a rubbish way to level up when the game first came out. Some of you guys were following some bogus guides where it just said literally stand in your base and hit a rock all day long. Like, that's not playing a game, That that is just nonsense. So yeah, it kind of makes sense now that you actually only get XP when you're actually fighting against real enemies. When PvP is on, players can attack any target. Creatures stop moving when they reach in their random movement target. Creatures now have groups. Creatures in the same group won't attack each other. Now this, I don't think it's completely new, but it's definitely been tweaked. We know that there used to be a big method of kiting certain creatures and enemies into boss fights, like Bomas. And it still works to a degree. If you take some fuelings into a Bomas fight, they'll normally take out some of the creatures around, but they won't necessarily take out Bomas. Obviously, if you're lucky enough to have the swamp biome next to the planes that close. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more as we go through it as well. Passive creature health regeneration doubled, but interval is also doubled. So you won't really notice it, but there's a little like, tweet how it works. You'll get the tick health showing on your passive regeneration for your creatures. So you can actually see it going up over time, but they won't get any health regeneration, obviously, when they're hungry. So another mechanic, part of the locks, the wolf and the boar taming. Sleeping now is a proper cooldown. Creatures may tolerate tar, so not all creatures are going to get stuck in a tar. So if somehow you're near plains or a different biome like a swamp and you're trying to kite creatures across, be careful. It does seem like it only slows down a few of the creatures. Multiplayer health scaling instead reduces damage taken. Overall, the effect is the same, but it now applied dynamically if the player count changes. So I'm guessing if there's more players, then you may find it becomes a bit harder. Damage now triggers damage shake if more than 10% of the player health previously more than 2 triggered. No idea what that means. New formula for speed reduction liquids that affects both walking and running. Lots of small tweaks related to being in liquids. I was told that the liquids is a big thing for Valheim. Getting the tar actually working might seem pretty simple, but it's the first time they're adding proper movable liquids into the game. It's a big cost and performance. The fact that Valheim is actually running pretty well, I've not seen any complaints about the game. In fact, I've seen nothing but praise saying the game is much more stable now and the FPS is much improved, even with big bases. So in reality, this could possibly mean we could potentially have things where we are allowed to have moats filled with water, not just tar. In the future, we may be able to direct water a little bit easier. At the moment, you can kind of fill a moat up if you dig from the ocean, but eventually it does peter out a little bit and it's just not as easy to kind of manage. I guess the dream would be one day to have a bucket like Minecraft that you fill with water and you can simply dump into a pond that you've created. Gear speed penalty reduces not back push with one times multiplier. Previously it was a 1.5 multiplier. So for example, a 10% speed reduction not back reduction from 15 to 10%. I honestly feel like it's kind of, I've been playing and resting around stuff yesterday and the knockback is actually doing me a disservice. Like when creatures are hit me and I'm defending, I'm knocking them back so far that I can't actually go and hit them afterwards. So they seem to have made it easier anyway, but it still seems a little bit dodgy how you can't really hit other creatures sometimes while blocking. 
They've got a new code for sliding, dodging, moving and jumping not possible while stagger animation is ending, creatures to stay stunned slightly longer. I just haven't come across that yet with the parry system. You can see from this footage from my stream last night, it takes a big amount of effort to get closer to an enemy after you've staggered it. So supposedly some creatures have less stagger duration and this guy has tested it on Stone Golem and one of the attacks still causes longer stagger. So I guess maybe it's some creatures have got an improvement, others haven't. Staggering now gradually decreases 20% of max per second instead of resetting after 3 seconds of not taking physical damage. So yeah, there's a bunch change to this. I am not the best person to go through some of this stuff. Like I said, I was trying to get my head around combat because I know a lot of you guys have been complaining. I've seen some of the reviews and people saying that it's just a bit too harsh now or that your OP character suddenly is getting owned by creatures it never used to. But I think that's part and parcel. The game developers want the game to be a little bit harder. They felt like the balance was just a bit off. And so hence why they wanted people to learn from the very beginning, go through the stages, maybe get more XP, and maybe obviously be in the right position where you're going to need the best foods, the best armor before taking on certain creatures in certain biomes. That's the way the game should be played. But over the last six, seven months, players have kind of discovered that if you can parry well, you can pretty much beat almost any enemy, even with the most rubbish gear. That's just my hot take on it. As I said, they've already buffed and done a hot fix where they improved the foods, and maybe some of these changes have also been improved. And I'm sure if we give the right kind of constructive feedback, we will get across if there are some changes you still think are a bit too unfair. But otherwise, I feel like the game is in a good state for me anyway. I'm not a huge expert in the combat. I've done my 100 days, and that was like me playing it again for the first time after only doing news and info guides for the last sort of five months. I hadn't really played it since it came out fully. And I've got to say, I'm not noticing a huge difference. We were getting owned by the fueling last night, as you would expect though, if you're not too clued up on combat. We were trying a different bunch of weapons, me and Goblin, and I kind of didn't mind getting killed because that's what's meant to happen if you've got five of the end game at the moment creatures attacking you. I was super proud in my 100 days that I eventually got to the stage I could defeat two trolls on my own as I just kept getting owned. And while I still had trouble this time, we're starting to learn the nuances of it and really get to grips with how the shield with maximum health can really help you defend against a lot, a lot of damage. It's just about how you apply it, what weapons work best with big shields. Attacks that cause special status effects now refresh the status effect duration on hit, not burning, freeze, etc. So I guess if you stand there getting hit by creatures, you may find it a bit more difficult that they're going to do more damage to you, as I think that relates to you rather than any damage you're doing to creatures. Now the ride skill, I was told that it decreases the stamina usage, but here it says it increases the speed by up to 25%. So getting it maxed up is what you're going to get. You're going to get your locks running around at 25% more. Nothing about the stamina decrease, it may still be a feature, remember these are just being pulled off by someone who's very knowledgeable that kind of stuff. Take it with a pinch of salt, some of this stuff may be wrong or it's been corrected already, or it's maybe just been translated over a bit differently. Less than 0.1 damage is now ignored, previously had to be exactly zero to be ignored. Maybe that's to help with people slightly falling off, just slight rises and losing a bit of health. Spirit damage now stacks, duration resets and new damage gets added with the remaining damage equals a recalculated tick damage. So does that mean that spirit damage is going to be a bit more OP now if you've got a silver knife? Less than 1.2 spirit damage is now ignored unless already burning. I've had some tweaks to the animation code. In the chat window, animations are now commands, similar to cheats, but the chat window can only trigger non-cheat commands. The tab shows available commands when hyphen something forward slash hyphen has been entered. Also works for consoles, but no that needed. So effectively, you can go ahead and do emotes and stuff like that in the chat commands, which you've always been able to do. So I'm not too sure now. I'm pretty sure I was watching uh, Grimcore play last night. And I'm sure he did use a cheat command in the actual chat menu. Major changes to cooking station codes. Yep, well, we know that obviously with the brand new stuff added to it. They've got a new effect area, warm, cozy area. Seems to prevent cold and freezing. So is this just to do with maybe the armor sets? Is it adding an extra buff or is this going to be something to do with actually being able to cook or have certain build pieces in a building in the snow that it's going to give you an extra buff? Fireplace is now support holding the interact key, new footsteps while in tar. The joypad up and down now zooms the camera. 
yep it's great the controller stuff is amazing like i have really enjoyed the building aspect of valheim in the last few days and i've got to say the controls are just a little bit more snappier i use a controller wherever possible because you know reasons and i find it's definitely a lot better than it was before i still think it was pretty decent before but yeah it's definitely improved resistance no longer applies replace damage immunity so serpent doesn't become susceptible to fire damage when wet so no more loading up fire arrows on him i guess Poison damage is reduced by armor now. Chop and pickaxe damage aren't reduced by armor. Lightning damage also causes staggering. Previously, only physical damage calls. So that's pretty interesting. Shields and weapons may have damage resistance when blocking. For example, if a shield had frost resistance, blocking would always halve the damage. No idea if you didn't need to buy anything just yet. So I guess we've got to check some of them. I am, I'm trying to think if there's any shields like that that have any kind of uh, like resistance extras on them. Like if they've always been able to resist like frost damage and stuff let me know if you do know but it does seem like something that might be coming into the game in the future so obviously the big one i know is still contentious the blocking now uses the armor formula to determine how much damage can be blocked and how much automatically gets through the damage that gets through causes extra staggering on top of the staggering caused by taking damage blocking with a low block power weapon can result in much more staggering than just tanking the hit so yeah, it's kind of meant to be that way. If you've got rubbish weapons, you're not meant to be able to block indefinitely anymore or be able to parry as much as you were. Block fails if you stagger and doesn't reduce any damage. Parrying always uses the full stamina amount. Previously scaled with used block power. Normal blacking still scales with blocking power. So I guess this is what I found a bit troublesome last night. I was expecting to hopefully parry and then move along and kind of jab someone. But even without that, even when I was just blocking, like I said, some of the creatures were just kind of rebounding so much that I couldn't get a, a swipe in. Parrying range attacks doesn't stagger the attackers. Parrying melee attacks also uses double stammer. Blocking knockback melee attackers based on use block power, scaling from 50% to 100% deflection force. Bow hold duration scales from 100% to 20% based on skill. So I'm guessing that even if you've got just a couple of points in your bow skills, it's going to be an improvement from 0 to 20%, or you've got to hold it at least 20% now to do some damage. Players can't pick up corrupted items, i.e. missing icons, etc. That would mess up the inventory. They've got the new code for the incinerator. So I'm guessing the incinerator actually means it's the, uh, the, 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 the obliterator. Items get stuck in tar. Items in tar never despawn. We know that already. I've shown that in some of my guides that you can lose pieces in the tar if you don't go back and actually drain it. So if you do ever drop anything, that's where you might have left it. Item stands are now protected by wards. Some changes to light. We've got new code for liquids, replacing the previous wall system with a more general approach. New code for map table and shared map for minimap. Not really seen too much of the benefits of the cartographer's table because I've usually been playing single player. But obviously, with the way that you can now play the game without a map, I wonder if there could be a way that the cartographer's table can be utilized. Like maybe you've got to use it a certain amount before it'll activate pings or, or, or other ways. Remember, it's just a little thing to add on if people want an extra challenge in Valheim. It's not something that's going to come into the game wholesale. They clearly use it as just a command to have some fun. But yeah, if they do want to flesh that out a little bit more, maybe there can be a bit of a balance between not having a map, but also having more ways that you can signal or show directions that you're going or where you've been. And I think the cartographer's table could be a way of doing that. Like, it could work almost like you go on an adventure and you'll only see where you've been when you've come back and you've put it onto the cartographer's table itself. And I can see that kind of working well with a no mini map or no proper map. And then the map slowly reveals. So I guess that's similar to the Fog of War, but it kind of not. Anyway, I'm waffling about that, but there you go. Creatures check targeting more often from 3 seconds to 2 seconds when a player is nearby, otherwise from 10 seconds to 6 seconds. Event creatures lose the hunt mode when the event ends, so they despawn more easily. I have noticed that as well, a lot of creatures are just running off straight away, they're not necessarily sticking around. Creatures walk into the run when trying to flee and despawn. Tameable creatures won't get healed by eating food, they only get healed by passive regeneration when not hungry. So you can't just simply chuck a bunch of food at your locks to heal him up. He's actually got to have got hungry first. New code for movement damage activates AOE effect when moving fast enough. Pickables may have a flag to prevent picking while in tar. New comfort group for tables. Holding attack button works with chain attacks. Holding bow at full charge consumes only half of the stamina when charging. 
So that was a big, big improvement. They basically said they wanted you to have more, it was gonna have less stamina time usage, so you'd be able to hold your aim a little bit more and it wouldn't consume as much stamina. But the payoff was that you wouldn't necessarily get as much powerful shots if you were releasing the bow too quickly and your aim certainly wouldn't be that great. Food Decay uses formula remaining. Mate, some of this stuff is just nonsense to me. But I think in clarity, it basically says if your food is decaying, you're going to get 81% of the stats instead of 50. At 75% decay, you get 66% of the stats. And at 90% decay, you get 50% of the stats. And at 99% of the decay, you get 25% of the stats. I don't even really remember food running out. I guess I cook it so much or so little. Maybe it's like some of the raw stuff. But yeah, I didn't even realize that was a thing. So obviously it means it's a buff. It means that your food's still gonna do some good stuff for you. Even if it is going rotten, you're gonna get more out of it. New setting for gamepad sensitivity. Projectiles shot by players ignore his enemy check when PvP is on basically allowing them to hit any creature. And yeah, projectiles are now marked as a ranged attack, so parrying won't cause stagger. So no more, I guess, cheesing, beating off arrows with your shield and then actually staggering a creature that just fired it. You can disable things with a proximity state code uh, when players or other creatures get near. near. Hugin has a new setting, our tutorials enabled. Runestones can show locations. New code for the saddle. Actually, the locations there for the runestones is pretty good. There's a bunch of new dreams as well, like stories that have been added to part of the little sequences when you go to sleep. Flow from frost damage and tar is based on the base speed, so they stack additively, effectively reducing the movement speed to zero. Slow from frost damage is bugged. The slow starts at 0% and gradually increases towards 100% slow before it started at 90% and gradually decreased towards 0% slow. Obviously, we've got the new food, puke, that removes the food. You can spawn in the berries as well. They're called Buke Perries in the game, but if you want to actually spawn them in, they're called Puke Berries. Smelters and kilns get blocked by smoke now, and creatures from general spawning system have 10% chance per level up. Now this is work in progress for data changes, but it says here Serpent Scale Shield has reduced block but provides pierce resistance when blocking. Poison damage slightly increased for all enemies to compensate that poison is now reduced by armor. So if you're wondering why you're getting owned by certain creatures in the swamp more, it may be because, yeah, you have got not the right kind of armor on. You've been using your old armor sets, etc. And just assuming that you'll be able to just run around and take the hit if you've got high health. Yagalith attacks are now blockable and deal lightning damage. Damages were slightly reduced. Now, some of you guys have been complaining that the bosses have become stupidly hard. I'm guessing this is all part and parcel of getting used to the new system. But the fact that Yagalith is now blockable and the damages were slightly reduced, that seems like it's been made a little bit easier. And yeah, that lightning damage, I think, is brand new. Fuelings deal less damage, have less health and lower stagger limit, and obviously they got nerfed a little bit more too. Fueling shamans have less health. Locks have lower stagger limit. The Grey Dwarf Shaman drop Buke Berries. In fact, all the shamans drop the Buke Berries. Onion seeds may spawn on mountain treasure chests. You should know that by now. I've done guides on all this stuff. Tar pits spawn on the plains, of course. Birch has a 15% chance to drop a seed. Oaks have a 10% chance to drop a seed. So you're not guaranteed to get one every time, just like it is with the other trees too. But yeah, oak, you're definitely gonna have to chop a lot down to hopefully get enough seeds to build an oak forest. That is definitely a good idea though. I really fancy having some oak trees in a build. All weapons stamina costs were rebalanced, so the early game weapons use less stamina, while end game weapons use more. And I guess this falls in line with a lot of older players stating that even though they're OP sometimes, they've done loads in the game, they're finding trouble now because they have kind of nerfed a lot of the, the end game stuff. Early game weapons now do more damage per use stamina than later weapons, especially if the higher tier weapon is not upgraded. So it could be worth upgrading some of the low tiers. You do get to the point in Valheim that I noticed in my 100 days where you do end up just chucking away absolutely everything. Even upgraded, it's not worth it once you get hold of an iron sword or, or whatever. So I still think it's decent that if you do go to the, the, the trouble of upgrading it, it could still be useful. Secondary attack costs will not change. Secondary attacks on early game weapons are a waste of stamina. Similarly, second attacks become very stamina efficient with end game weapons. So there's a top tip for everyone moaning about the combat being changed so much. Use your secondary attacks with some of them late game weapons. 
It pretty much says here then that don't use secondary attacks if you've got early game stuff. Sword stamina cost increased to match mace stamina cost. So they're pretty much the same now. Axe damage slightly increased and attack speed slightly faster, about the same DPS as swords. And dagger damage greatly increased and attack speed much faster. Slightly low DPS as swords. I've been trying this out, that's why I did my armory build yesterday, because I was going to show off the, the knives. So I've got a feeling they're going to be a little bit of the new meta, just dodging and rolling around using the knives or using a little parry shield. Battle axe damage slightly decreased and attack speed slightly faster, both primary and secondary. Yeah, I guess even with the brand new axe, it's still a bit slow to use. But apparently they have actually made it a bit faster than it was previously. They just maybe reduced some of the damage from it. And the at gear secondary attack slightly faster. So there we go, there's some top tips there in terms of combat for late game players. And yeah, I've got to say a big shout out to this guy for pulling off this stuff. Rido Spoo, well done. I'll leave the link for this so you can go and pursue it a little bit more if you want to. There's loads of comments adding some more stuff as well. A lot of people are saying that the lock's aggro range has been increased. And it does seem that if you've got a wolf coat, a wolf cape, then you won't necessarily get the cold or freezing uh, negative buff anymore when wet. Called into a lot of the comments here, people are still saying things like the spears aren't good still. I think one good constructive piece from this is these are a lot of changes that I think should probably go into patch notes in the future. Games like Art Survival Evolved, Conan Exiles, they pretty much list every single change that goes into these games. Now these games are much bigger, they're much grander in terms of how many items, the dinosaurs, the things that can go wrong be massively multiplayer games too. So obviously they're going to have a lot more when they do these kind of patches. And a lot of them are just fixes and stuff like that. But even when it is more or less a quality of life improvement, I think even putting stuff that sometimes doesn't make sense is still worthwhile. It does mean that some of us won't have to trawl through Reddit to look to see what has really changed under the hood. And I think this kind of stuff will actually help in terms of people understanding. After reading some of that, I reckon a bunch of people that may have gone given Valheim a bit of a bad review in the last couple of days might actually come to grips with some of the changes a bit better and a bit easier. Realising that some of the endgame stuff hasn't just been nerfed completely, it's about how you're using it, using the secondary attacks more. Understanding that they're trying to help the balance for the early game a little bit more. So yeah, I do encourage Iron to do list more of these changes properly. Yes, there may be issues with, you know, kind of spoiling stuff, but when you do a, a reveal trailer that shows an enemy attack and some of the new stuff, yeah, patch notes are patch notes. I guess the way around that is to maybe take them off the menu, only keep the highlights on the main menu, and always have a link to a proper dedicated changelog or stuff that's going on. I don't necessarily think it always has to happen with every single little fix or update, but certainly when you've got big changes to balance, you kind of want to lay out exactly every change that's gone on. And also it does negate that sometimes some of these may be wrong. They may have been interpreted a little bit wrongly by the person who's doing it. Or they may have been already fixed in the hotfix that came out the other day. So yeah, just my two pence worth. I think it's worth going a bit deeper, finding some way to post more deeper patch notes to people that want them. One last thing I will say from actual Weatherspoo here himself is a good paragraph about the blocking. Blocking works now like armor. When you get hit, your armor mitigates some of the damage while some damage always gets through. The damage that got through will increase your staggering. Blocking now works exactly like that. Some damage gets mitigated, some gets through, causing staggering and is then handled by resistances and armors. However, this new system doesn't work that great if you attempt to block with something that has much less block power than your armor. So in theory, you're not gonna be using just a rubbish wooden shield anymore you do need to make sure that your armor matches the shield and in effect you're building a proper tanky class. For example, if you have 100 armor and get hit by 100 damage, you would lose 25 health and get 25 staggering. If you used bow mass, which would get reduced to 6 health loss and staggering. Now if you try to block the same attack with let's say 10% block power, 90% damage would pass through causing 90% staggering, which most likely staggers you and makes the whole block fail. So by blocking and your character taking a defensive stance, you will take the same damage than if you hadn't blocked. On top of that, you also get staggered and wasted stamina. So in effect, don't try and rely on just either one or the other. You kind of need a shield that matches your armor set. 
Otherwise, you may as well learn how to dodge and move around a little bit more if you don't have either of them two things kind of up to the kind of same quality. And that's what I'm kind of gauging from this anyway. But yeah, really good post. Go and read it if you're having still problems or you're a bit worried about stuff. And there we go. Let me know your thoughts about the update. There's no doubt about it. Whenever these kind of updates roll in, there's always going to be a bit of blowback and there'll be a transition where people get used to stuff. Don't believe any negativity too much. If you're starting out the game for the first time in a while, let me know if you're enjoying it. Tell me what you're loving about the new update. And just be prepared for things to level off once more hotfixes come in. Or just keep it in mind that in the future they may change stuff based on good constructive feedback. Our survival of old has gone down this route so many times, as of other games. And they've all jumped in terms of where they are in terms of reviews. It has to be said, I try not to sugarcoat anything. I'll give you the good and bad. I'm not just simply here to simp for Iron Gate. They have lost 2% in terms of positive reviews over the last 30 days. But it was only like two months ago that they were at 90% anyway. As they came up to release, they gained another 2%, so they were at 92 in the last 30 days. But they have lost that 2% since the update came out. So obviously there is a small proportion of people that are unhappy. Overall though, it's not really affected the overall score. 95% of people picked up this game in the last seven months are saying it's one of the better ones out there. As I've shown off time and time again, this puts it as like number two, number maybe number one survival game of them maybe something like Minecraft or Terraria. Obviously Minecraft's not on Steam, but we'll take it for gospel that it's still pretty rated highly. As soon as you get any more info about hotfixes and new updates, I'll let you guys know. Until then, laters.